This edition of Mac Voices is supported by Smile, the makers of PDF Pen and PDF Pen Pro. PDF editing for your Mac, iPhone, and iPad. Learn more at smilesoftware.com. Welcome to Mac Voices Live. Okay, not Mac Voices Live. For some reason, folks, we had trouble getting Zoom and Facebook to talk to each other tonight. So we're going to do the show. It's going to be released in the feeds. We apologize for the folks that would like to have participated and seen this live. Um, but we're going to go forward with it anyway because, man, we got Bob, Dr. McLevitis with us. Bob, welcome. It's great to see you. Thanks. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, I apologize for the technical problems, but I know that if there's anyone that understands technical problems, it would be you. So, <laughs> Hey, we made the best of it. We had fun. Didn't yeah, we? And, and there will be some of that in the outtakes, folks. <laughs> so be sure to listen past the credits because you will be rewarded. Before we hit up uh, Bob for all his knowledge, though, I want to make sure we go around the room, let you know who else is here with us because we have quite a little crowd gathered. Um, first up, the guy who is not the co-host, but seems to be auditioning constantly for it, Mr. David Ginsburg. <laughs> David, good to see you. Good to see you, Chuck. Yeah, it seems like I am auditioning for this part, and uh, I don't know. You yeah. never know. <laughs> yeah, and I've, I've, I've got an answer for that, but I'm not going to leave it. I'm just going to leave right. it there. <laughs> glad to, glad um, to be here. <laughs> the, the guy that's also apparently competing for the job, too, Mr. Frank Petrie. Frank, good to see you. Thanks for uh, showing up. Yeah, they keep kicking me out of the local restaurants, so... So you come here. here. Okay. Well, that's that could be worse. Um, next up, Ms. Brittany Smith, who joined us. Uh, she got out of a meeting early just to come and join us. And then, darn, Brittany, we can't do it live. Sorry. That's all right. I'm still happy to be here. Well, it's great to have you. It's always great to have you. Last but absolutely not least, uh, Mr. Warren Sklar has uh, has rejoined the Mac Voices panel. Warren, it's good to see you, too. Yeah, good to see you. It's a bad night on TV, so... There you go. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, wait, that's what's a, wait, who still watches oh, TV in real praise. time anyway? <laughs> I do. Oh, oh my. That's bad. Wow, I'm, I'm not sure if I feel sorry for him because of Ben night for TV or insulted. <laughs> Chuck, what does that do to your ratings? How many stars is that? I don't know, but it's, it's a bad wow. night for streaming. It, it's been yeah. a bad It's been a bad quarter for TV. Uh, <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. So, Bob, um, you know, you're the featured guest tonight, and I want to make sure we get to several things. Um, but the big news, I guess, for you is Garage Band for Dummies. Yes, yes, it's out. It's it's in the wild. And I sent you the URL. <clears throat> so anybody, even if you didn't buy the book, can download the bonus material, which is uh, my rendition of House of the Rising Sun. It's a great story. It's my publisher said, so... You want to have bonus material? I said, yeah. And they said, what do you want to do? And I said, Rockaway Beach by the Ramones. And they said, uh, is it in the public domain? <laughs> and I said, no. And they said, well, you need to find something that is. And so uh, it turns out House of the Rising Sun not only is a great you know, song to record because it's only got four chords and it's, it's in 4-4 four, four time. It's real easy. But more than that, it was the first song I ever learned to play on guitar. <laughs> So it was really appropriate wow. that that happened to be in the public domain. So um, Chuck has the URL. You can download the uh, final mix in my ears, uh, and you can download the whole GarageBand project and remix it yourself or add some, you know, add some horns or strings or whatever it is that oh, nice. makes you happy. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a way that you can, A, um, hear how I envisioned that song coming out in GarageBand, and then take what I've done and, you know, add or delete whatever makes you happy. It's really fun. I mean, if you like music, you'll have fun playing with the, uh, the GarageBand project. And it's all free, except for the book. The book costs money. And worth it. <laughs> so... This uh, what what which version? I, I know that's the current version of GarageBand, but what edition of uh, of the book is this? Is this the second edition? The first one came out in two thousand five. Wow! And so for fifteen years, I've been begging my publisher to allow me to update the book, and it. it I guess this year, uh, demand finally was high enough 
that they they said yes. I, I swear, I've been asking every year. Hey, GarageBand keeps getting better and better. Let's do a new edition of the book. It's like ah, the numbers don't work out, and it's not the right time. Fifteen years later, I got my second chance. And I and I can I can tell you, I'm I was excited to see that because you're right. I mean, I use GarageBand to to edit my podcast, and I'm happy to do that. Um, but there's there's so few books out there about the GarageBand other than the, your 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 book and all the new one. Uh, and I, I don't think anybody's been do, really doing much of anything on GarageBand lately. So I think this is a great, a, a great place to be with this. It's such a great app and the price is, you know, so right. Yeah. I mean, everybody yeah, has but- everything they need to make a podcast or a musical recording uh, all for free. <clears throat> and and the uh, if you haven't played with the iPad or uh, iPhone versions, they're really different and really fun. Um, they work very differently. They have these... Uh, smart instruments that you can kind of play on the glass screen, uh, which is way different from the Mac version where you kind of have to have some skills. Um, but it's, <laughs> yeah. it's both are really fun. And they're both covered in full in GarageBand for Dummies from, <laughs> who's it from? Wiley? A Wiley brand. No. I think it's for Dummies Publishing. Yeah. Wiley knows? Coyote. <laughs> so, so, Bob, GarageBand has been oh. sort of a passion of yours. Uh, for a long time. Since the moment I saw it at Macworld Expo uh, with, I think it was John Mayer introducing it with Steve Jobs on stage. I mean, I I ran out of that keynote and ran directly to the Wiley booth and said, you got to let me have GarageBand for dummies. You got to. I'm the guy. I'm the one. Uh, You know, I don't know if most, most people don't know this, but Before I became a tech writer, I studied audio engineering and wanted to be a record producer. Um, And I I took a two-year program, an apprenticeship with a multi-Grammy award-winning producer. Um, And when I graduated, I went to work in advertising, and I realized that I didn't like working that hard. (laughs) And so I decided to become a tech writer. But my background in audio engineering, I think, made me a good choice to write this book because for the longest time I wanted to make music, but I couldn't afford to. And GarageBand democratized the process. It it gave me the tools I needed to make songs I liked making that sounded the way I wanted them to sound without paying 50 bucks, 100 bucks, 200 bucks an hour for the privilege of being able to record music. So to me, it was like, Oh my God, this is the greatest thing ever invented on a computer. Then I got Final Cut Pro, but that's a different story. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so who's who's the book for, Bob? Is it for someone anybody that wants to learn anybody that wants to learn to make something with GarageBand? Now the metaphor I use for the book is making a song. Um, I, I show you the process. It would work the same if you were trying to build a podcast. The idea is you have multiple tracks that play in sync with each other. And and so all of what I teach, although it's not aimed at podcasters or uh, dramatic reading or anything like that, it's, it's aimed at making a pop song. But everything that I show you would apply to anything you want to record with a microphone and a, and a computer or a microphone and an iPad. Okay, so I don't have to, I mean, I, I know from playing with GarageBand that I can play with it with a lot of its stock loops and everything. But do you, do you get into actually connecting the inst- instruments to GarageBand so you can record directly into them? Without absolutely. A mic? And yeah, absolutely. And, you know, what, what interface you need if you want to do this or that. It, 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 you know, depends what you want to do. At the very lowest end, you can get an adapter that will let you plug a guitar into your MacBook Pro, into the, the headphone microphone port. And so for like $10, you can play guitar into GarageBand. Won't sound great. But it works. Uh, And then from there, you can go to microphones that have the little barrel connector that's called a, um, oh, man. XLR. The XLR. XLR. Thank you. I blanked on that. You know, I'm 65 years old. I'm entitled to blank once in a while. Yeah, XLR (laughs) connectors. How to get those to work with your Mac. So this is my favorite mic right here. This is a Shure SM58. They oh, are classic. They're, they're bulletproof. I could throw it at the wall and it would still work great. Um, they they give you a nice warm sound, 
and they're very hard to overdrive and make sound crappy. So I love this mic, but for a long time, there wasn't a way to connect an XLR microphone to a MacBook Pro. Now there's lots of ways, and we talk about that. Uh, the first part of the book talks about gear you might want, gear you need to have, how to set it up, how to make sure it's working right, how to set the level so that you get a good result from it. It's all there. If you want to make, if you want to record stuff in GarageBand, you, everything you need is in this book. Now, I want to go back to the House of the Rising Sun for a second, okay. um, because I want people to understand what they're hearing. So what, what kind of setup did you use? Because this will give folks an idea of what they can okay. do at home. So I recorded the entire project. Uh, I played every instrument. I sang every vocal. And I did all the production and engineering. Uh, the instruments I used were uh, GarageBand for the iPad, to do some of the guitar arpeggios that I'm not talented enough to play. So I set that up and it plays those on auto. So it's playing these background arpeggios while I'm strumming the chords on an acoustic guitar. Um, all the guitars are overdubbed at least once. So most of them are doubled, some of them are tripled. And then I sang the lead vocal and a kind of a, a second, a doubled vocal that's not exactly a harmony, but kind of a, a just, a, fattening it up um and then i played the organ which i don't even play but i learned the four chords that are in house of the rising sun and then i learned how to play that little organ solo that goes wah, 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 da, 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 da. it was so much fun so i used a hundred dollar like midi keyboard um i used both them uh, an electric guitar and acoustic guitar and uh, I think I used this microphone, but I, I, whatever microphone it was, I only used the one mic for everything. I used the uh, GarageBand built-in drummers to give me the drum feel. And it, it really came out sounding like a real track recorded in the studio. Um, you've got the URL. It's in the, it'll be in the show notes. Just download the thing and listen to my final mix. And then go into GarageBand and play with it. You know, take some stuff louder or softer or take one of the guitars out and replace it with a didger, didgeridoo or whatever. The whole thing about GarageBand that's so cool is it comes with like 200 instruments and you can actually add things that you don't know how to play like strings or horns. You know, you press one key on the keyboard and you've got a whole uh, arcade of, of trumpets playing or, or uh, violins. And, and it doesn't take a lot of skill to add this kind of uh, layers of, of sound to your songs. And you don't have to buy anything. It used to be, you know, every little thing you wanted to do, you had to either hire the right musician or rent the right instrument to record it in the right studio with the right microphones. And now it's all, you know, on your disc. Well, no and that's why charge. That's exactly why I wanted to ask you to, to explain it, because if folks go and listen to it, they'll understand what they're hearing. And then if they want to, they can go in and play and actually see how you put it together and modify it to maybe not necessarily to their liking, but as part of the learning process. More cowbell. More cowbell. Bob, I was <laughs> You can do that. <laughs> with all the different instruments, I know from goofing around with GarageBand, do you, um, I tend to like, play around with a lot with the Asian instruments for different textures. So like you were saying, you did the keyboard, but you can also replace that and swap out the instrument. Do you go Absolutely. into that? Absolutely. If you, if you don't like my organ, you can change it to an electric piano. And if that doesn't sound good, maybe try a big grand piano, like a Bosendorfer uh, concert grand. And if that okay. doesn't sound good, try it on a glockenspiel or a harpsichord. And yes, I do. I experiment a lot. It turned out, Hush the Rising Sun, I was going for a very 60s sound. So I was looking for an organ sound that sounded like a 60s rock organ. The old Hammond guitar sound. Exactly. There was a lot of uh, Leslie going yeah. on. And, you know, I was trying for that, that sound. But uh, on other recordings, I've used lots of weird instrumentation um, to, to give it texture. And it's so cool that you have that all built in. You don't have to like go search for things uh, to try them with your music. Plus you can spend a lot of time in this rabbit hole, let me tell you. Yeah, I, I remember when GarageBand came out 
and as as someone who does not play an instrument has no musical talent it is fun to go in and throw together the loops and you can come up with something that i mean it sounds, sounds like, like music mu- well, music more accurately, but um, you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. the fact the fact that you created it, I think, is you know sort of the impressive thing and and the fun thing. And then you know, I really wish that I did play something because then I, if, if folks, if you haven't tried it, go and try it because it will kind of hook you for a while. And if you play something, it, it's guaranteed to suck you right in. Two well, hours you, later, you'll look up and go, "Wow." Yeah. I can't believe I just sat here playing with loops for two hours. Yep. Well, also, if you had a podcasting like David was saying, you can create your own musical intros and outros in a heartbeat. It actually it comes with a ton of uh, that kind of interstitial yeah. music, stingers and uh, opens and closes for things. They've got like 10, 30, and 60-second musical snippets that you can use mm-hmm. to open or close a show or go to a break. Uh, you really don't have to buy anything. You can use all the built-in stuff and get, you know, pretty professional results. Did you go yeah. into about how to do ringtones? Yes. Twice. It's in two different places in the book. One in one place, in one place I talk about how to do it, and in another place I talk about how to get them onto your device. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For Bob, you're right. You know, for a long time. If as po- in the early days of podcasting, you knew who was using GarageBand because you could hear the same stingers, intros, outros, yep, yep. Uh, yeah. the music, and it's like, okay, guys, just go in and change the instruments. But yeah. there's a lot just- more now. But yeah. even so, yeah, it, it. Let's put it this way: if you're doing this professionally, you know where to go to get other stuff that doesn't sound like everybody else for free if you want it, or you can pay, you know, reasonable prices to license stuff now. So for, uh, I had, what's it called? Um, video blocks and audio, whatever their audio thing is when I was doing a lot of video and I, I bought a lot of like interstitial music from them for, I don't know, a few dollars for, for usage rights for, uh, YouTube. And it was worth it to me to not have the same audio that everybody else was having that was, you know, built in. So there's yeah. lots of resources for this kind of stuff if you want them. Today's edition of Mac Voices is supported by Smile, the makers of world-class software. If you haven't noticed, Smile has made a number of upgrades to PDF Pen recently, making it even more useful. Things like the ability to add page labels in multiple formats for documents, new stationary options to customize your page designs, a new magnifier window that lets you zoom up to 2,000%, and something that everyone has run into at one time or another. Now you can optimize your PDF file size as much as you need, tweaking color, grayscale, or monochrome images, and even remove third-party metadata all to save size, so your file can be emailed or archived while retaining quality. Those and a few hundred other features are all standard in PDF Pen. PDF Pen Pro adds even more, including the ability to use DocuSign to send documents easily and securely. The new versions of PDF Pen and PDF Pen Pro work with PDF Pen for iPhone and iPad, allowing seamless editing across devices when used with Dropbox or iCloud, so you can work wherever, whenever, and on whatever device you wish. Get all the details at smilesoftware.com slash podcast. That's smilesoftware.com slash podcast, the makers of world-class software like PDF Pen and PDF Pen Pro. Thanks to Smile for their ongoing support of Mac Voices. I'm curious, of the panel, Frank, you're talking about you've used GarageBand. Who else plays any instruments? Brittany, I Warren? Did. Yeah, I did. Warren? What do you play? Uh, piano, keyboards. And uh, so, yeah, I've been playing with MIDI stuff for a while. And I started out in the Windows world with a Cakewalk. Was it Cakewalk, maybe? Yeah. yeah. Yep. And then... Yeah. Um, just remember, just back then, uh, yeah, the Sound Blaster 16, I guess, you had to have the Sound Blaster oh, 16. God. And then it, it oh, was a big a thing. Yes. It's a big, it was a big thing when the, 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 MIDI, the MIDI voices went to 
they were just like tones at first when I first started and then they went to actually kind of like kind of sound like instruments so yeah I just remember doing that and uh, uploading the music to uh, AOL I guess at the time when I was on there. <laughs> that's really you know, going back that's really going back you gave yeah. me the like most intense flashback I had completely uh, forgotten God. about the existence of Cakewalk <laughs> so like yeah. I, remember, I remember and then once I was visiting I was visiting uh, a friend in DC and they had a website and this was like this is like, you know, MySpace, uh, Geosites type of websites. And I went on the website just to check it out. And they were playing one of my songs that they uploaded to AOL, uh, an amazing song, of the, uh, live, uh, a song by Live All Over You and that I that I composed. Uh, and I'm like, yeah, I made it. So that was pretty. Um, but yeah, so I've been, so I, <laughs> now I, I play with, uh, I'm not professional at all, but I play with GarageBand. Um, I bought myself not too long ago a pretty, cheap midi keyboard which uh i was surprised didn't have the uh midi connections anymore it just has a usb which is nice yeah the yeah. barrel connectors are out yeah i'm so happy like i used to have those box you know the boxes right with the right MIDI midi connectors. interfaces yep. oh my god that's horrible so um yeah and then you were talking about the ipad version uh, so i have an ipad pro with a usb c cable so really i went out fun really fun so i got myself a usb um and uh, whatever Adapter. the printer yeah, so it's a, the printer and to the to the keyboard and then the USB C cable and it was it, it's great. It works. It is you know, great. Perfect. It is and then really I'm like, fun. Oh, now I got to get more into it. So I got an adapter where I can plug in the headphones because the Bluetooth uh, gives you a little bit of delay. A little lag, yeah. Yeah. So I kind of got into it. So I definitely, uh, I am not versed in it. So your book sounds like something it's I really, would definitely it's really fun. Get into. Yeah, I would love to get into it. You can it have more. a lot of fun. You can waste I, I a found, lot of time. I <laughs> found actually the iPad, the iPad, the iOS version was easier to deal with, I thought. Um, well especially if you're not uh, a fluent musician. You know, the mm -hmm. thing is it's got all those ways that you can play an instrument without having to know how to finger pick or uh you know, articulate, you can, you can play the, you can press a note and say, okay, that's the root chord for this thing that we want to play. And, and the iPad takes the rest. It like noodles away on that thing. Whereas the, the Mac version, it, it records what you play. You know, right, it really doesn't, doesn't have smart instruments. It just has instruments. And if you can't play something, yeah, even using the regular ones, I found the iPad was easier to do the tracks on because uh, it was just more into it. Like the controls were really easier for me. Interesting but, for me yeah. because I cut my teeth on the Mac version. I found it harder to learn the iPad version. Right, but not. But but I found it interestingly gave me a different creative process because of the way you could just press a button and have it show you different ways of playing that A chord. Uh, to me. It changed the way I composed. So I ended up composing a bunch of stuff on the iPad and finishing it on the Mac. Are they yeah. The files are interchangeable, right? Let kind of. Kind of. All right. Uh, you have to be very careful when you move them back and forth or you end up with one file with all the tracks in it. Yeah, I haven't tried uh, doing uh, it yet. Yeah. yeah. It, read the book. It tells you exactly what to do. Curious, well, Bob. It's uh, interesting. I would think yeah. that it would work both ways, that it would just be transparent. You could work on something on the Mac and then work on it on the iPad, but you can't. You have to go through a specific process if you want to keep it at all editable in the future. So yeah. that was I interesting. I scared to touch. Yeah, I, I guess the, I, the iPad uploads it to you, your iCloud drive. Yes, and then you have to save it in a certain format. And uh, it's all, all the, book. It's, it's all explained <laughs> yeah but you know what's weird is it used to be that um you could create something in GarageBand and then open it in logic pro and keep recording in logic pro and then save it and open it in garage band again and you can still do it one way you can still go from garage band to logic but you can't open a logic project in garage band anymore which is interesting to me so, you know, you can't, it's not real transparent. You can move your stuff from Logic to GarageBand or GarageBand to iPad GarageBand, but it's not, you know, it's not as simple as it might be. Curious, Bob, do you do your fine tuning on your songs? Let's say you have a note that you don't like. Do you tend to do your fine tuning in piano roll or notation? Piano roll. Um, 
because I don't read music <laughs> and notation freaks me out. It's like, if I look at piano roll, I can tell what notes in the wrong place just, just by looking at it and knowing that everything right. is in, everything is more or less in threes, you know, everything is, is offset right. by one or two or three and anything that's out of line needs to be adjusted. So piano roll speaks to my brain. Um, mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I never use notation, but uh I know other people that are exactly the opposite. They can't decipher piano roll and they use notation all the time. Yeah. Whatever's comfortable for you. Um, the thing is, I love to record stuff on MIDI because I can fix it later. It's unlike when I play yeah. guitar. If I hit a bad note on guitar, it's a lot harder to fix. Yeah. But in MIDI, I can just move the note to the right place and, you know, away I go. So I tend to use a lot of MIDI stuff like my bass. I know I could play bass and I know I could get a friend to come over and play a real bass. But if I do it in MIDI, if I screw it up, I can go fix it. I don't have to keep re-recording it till I get it right. Go right into quantizing. Never works for me. I, you know, really? I have this, I have, well, I have this, like, I don't know. I, I syncopate everything a little bit. It's like swing. And when I use their, like their, their adjustments, they seem to either be too much or too little. I go through and do it myself. I, I just either, you know, move the notes backward or forward in time or lengthen them if I want them to, to play longer. And mm. I can I can edit a I can edit a bass part or a piano part in, in that notation in the in the in the piano roll mode uh, faster than I can play it. So mm. you get you very you get very adept mm. at using that little pencil tool. Yeah. I'll go, but go back for a second though to um, to the iPad versus the Mac version, um, because I have not played with the iPad version. A lot of people, obviously, have not played with either one. What is it that the iPad version does that the Mac version doesn't? It has these about? instruments that are intelligent and that are played by like touching the glass screen. So, for example, there's a guitar instrument. You can play chords by pressing buttons. Or you can tap the notes on a guitar on the screen. Or you can turn on one of the arpeggiators that plays a pattern for you continuously based on whatever chord you press. And, and it, it does all these things that you can't do on the Mac version. On the Mac version, if you don't know how to play those notes, you're not getting that effect. But on, on, the, on the iPad, you can have it, you know, playing, it strums four different guitar patterns or four different... Uh, horn or string patterns and so for everything there's all these different patterns you can apply without having to know how to play them and so it opens up a, a whole world of, it's like uh, beyond loops so you don't have to really know much about playing all you have to know is that the right chord there is the a chord and then you have these four options one of which is probably going to be in the wheelhouse for what you're trying to accomplish pretty cool Okay, note to self, do not the less you know, band. Yeah, the less you know about making music, the more you'll like the iOS version of GarageBand because it's okay. got a lot of the stuff that, that would be harder for you uh, built right in. It just does it for you. But you could still do the, you could still do the GarageBand type of recording. Oh, absolutely. Too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you you could do everything that you could do in GarageBand on the Mac, but they also have these instruments where you just right. press the button for the chords. So you can go on the internet and download the chords to almost any popular song. What you're looking for are called uh, guitar tab. And it just, it's the lyrics with the name of the chord above the word where the chord changes. So if you get one of those and you go to the iPad version of GarageBand, you can pretty much bang out any song you can find on the internet. Because most songs don't have more than about six or seven chords in them. Okay, folks, if, if Mac Voices disappears, it's Bob's fault because I got sucked in the garage band. Because it sounds like <laughs> way, we'll, we'll see you in 2021. Yeah, yeah. You couldn't, you couldn't finish this book before the lockdown, Bob. Yeah, no, it was actually now. time for the lockdown because that's when people will need it the most. Yeah. Brittany, I saw you. Sh I thought I st saw you shake your head that you didn't play an instrument, and yet you said you had a flashback with Cakewalk. <laughs> yeah, I wanted something that would make the music for me because I don't know one note from another or one instrument from another, and it turned out I needed to know way too much to yeah, use Cakewalk. Cakewalk. Was not the but right I, thing. I did obtain a copy off the back of a truck to find that out, 
you know, back in the day. But <laughs> yeah, it's like 500 bucks. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, 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 I, I might have been better off with Fruity Loops, which is maybe a very in, in the long run. Ba- yeah, which is a very loop based kind of PC. Uh, well, now they have Mac version, but very based on the loop thing. So you don't have to play much. Yeah, I just Cakewalk don't have an really ear. Just, well, in the long run, Fiverr was my solution. <laughs> <laughs> but this is amazing. I wonder if I would have learned more if something this intuitive had been around back then. Well, if you had the time, you could certainly like create your intro and outro music for your show or something. You know, if you wanted to spend enough time, you could certainly come up with something you liked enough to use that you could say, I wrote that. You know? Yeah. <laughs> well, Bob, does don't they still have the training courses on GarageBand? I yeah, think I so. I think you can still get lessons. Um, there aren't a ton of them, and and yeah, it's been like five much. years since they added a new Not one. Much. But you can get a couple. There's there's a John Fogerty lesson, a Sting lesson. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're okay. They made a big deal about that when the first came yeah, out. Yeah. first came out, yeah. And, and then, then it kind of died, and it, 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 there haven't been any new ones in a long time. It's too bad. GarageBand, it seems like in the last few years, has not had the respect that it maybe should have. Now, it sounds like the iOS version has had a lot of respect and a lot of work done to it. But, I think you know, I think a lot of the hip hop kids, kids that are making like uh, hip hop and, and uh, R&B kind of, uh, you know, uh, rappy kind of music, like the iOS version a lot, because it offers this mode called grid mode, where you can take snippets of music and have them repeat and trigger them with your finger. And so it's a lot like um, if you're familiar with Ableton, it's it's what the kids use to do beats and stuff. And so it's a, it's a different metaphor for making music. And while it didn't really do much for me because I'm a rock and roll kind of guy, I build stuff with bass and drums first and then the guitars and <clears throat> layer in the vocals and then sweeten and, you know, it's traditional rock and roll uh, production process. But for uh, that kind of hip hop rappy stuff, the iOS version is very well suited to it because it lets you chop these things up and, and play them like it's hard to explain the grid mode, but it, it's only in the iOS version. And it's great for that kind of music where you've got repetitive like beats and, and you want to mix and match them and Different than using the recording, you know, the recording metaphor with tracks of tape moving across the screen like GarageBand. There's a bunch of kids will ask what's tape. So, Bob, (laughs) does your book cover the iOS version too? Yes. And and as a matter of fact, when we went into it, I didn't realize how different they were. And I went to the publisher after I'd started and I said, I think we need to do two separate books. And they said, that's out of the question. Can you do like half and half? (laughs) And I said, well, you know, like half of the process is the same on either platform, but the other half is completely different. So I did two sections on recording and then mixing and mastering and things like that are kind of generic. So uh, yes, I do cover both and, and not like in passing. I don't cover the iOS versions in passing. There's actually two whole sections on recording, mixing, and mastering on the on the iOS version. Oh, and good. then there's similar chapters for the Mac version. Yeah, because they're so different. I, I There was no way I could write about them in the same chapter and have it make any sense to you. You know, mm-hmm. I had to walk you through the process on one or the other and then tell you about how to use them together, which isn't as easy as you might think. Yeah. But yes, we cover we cover great. it all. We cover these it seem all. Like different audiences. They are very different. And I really thought two books was a well. You know, I don't do the numbers, so the spreadsheet obviously <laughs> said no. But but yeah. I really thought having a separate book because for most people, if you're going to record in GarageBand, you're going to do it on your laptop or you're going to do it on your iOS device. But you're not going to do a little on each and move them back and forth too much. I don't think. You know, I think people are tend to do a project on a device and all the files stay on that device. And you, you know, so separate books would have been better. Did you happen to mention on just out of curiosity, I know you can trigger loops and stuff with your computer keyboard. Did right. you go into that at all or? 
not terribly because it's, it's not it's not the best way to do it for, well, no, for 60 but, bucks you can buy a usb midi keyboard that'll let you do it right yeah it's really imprecise the thing is when you buy even the crappiest of midi keyboards it's got 128 uh degrees of velocity on each key yeah. so you know when you hit a key on your mac keyboard it's on or off you don't get any gradation. You don't get any like pressure sensitivity. Even yeah. the crappiest MIDI keyboard, if you press softly, you get a soft note. If you press hard, you get a hard note. So it, it, it isn't recommended except in an emergency. Well, if you're on like, an airplane like, and you're yeah. trying to, you got a song in your head that you just got to get out onto, onto a file. Yeah, the on-screen keyboard and your, your QWERTY keyboard will do the trick. But you can't really play real music on it. I was just worrying for tone deaf people who want to feel like they're musicians all of a sudden. We talk about the, it's called the uh, keyboard, what is it called? Keyboard something. Keep, hold on. So wait, <laughs> so Bob, you can't bring a full size MIDI keyboard on the airplane is what you're saying? You, you could, but yeah, if you okay. didn't happen to, there's an on-screen keyboard that works pretty you well. Just pay for, you know, with, with COVID. I want the seat of, next to me. Your seats. Yeah, they're, 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 yeah. They're, the seats you are gone You don't have now, to pay so. for middle seats anymore. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, while, that, while Bob's looking that up, David, uh, you're the one we didn't hear from. Do you play anything? I don't play any music, no. I'm, um, I, I, I enjoy music and, and listen to music, but I have not really dabbled in any in, in instruments uh, with a garage band, but uh, I, I've been always intrigued to look at what garage band can do. I just, I just don't, just don't know your house of the rising sun. I haven't already loaded your garage band. So I'm going to take a look and play. A yeah. Look at, and... listen, listen to the final mix first and then open the garage band project and see, you know, how I did that. It is asking for the auto tune E uh, plugin, which I don't. Yeah. Use. I forgot to tell you that you don't have that. <laughs> right. It'll play without it, but I'll be out of tune a little. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Peter. Oh, I didn't even think of that. Yeah. There's there's at least one plug-in you're not going to have. Most no, people a, aren't going to have. Is that a free plug-in or is no, it? No, uh, it's a hundred and some odd dollars. Oh. Uh, yeah. No, there's a bunch of versions of it. There's like five le levels of auto-tune starting at about $79, but um, you have to buy them. And if you if you're like me and you can't sing on key, it's worth every penny. <laughs> so so you're sticking with the story that it's the plugins fault. <laughs> well, no, no, no. If if you load it on your version, see what what happens is if you listen to the final mix, I will be auto tuned and I'll sing right on key. Uh -huh. If you listen to it in GarageBand because you don't have the plugin, you will hear my vocal without auto tuning, and you'll uh -huh. be able to tell just how much the uh, auto-tune helped in the final mix. <laughs> it's actually better that you don't have it because that way you can compare the, you know, compare them and see, see mm -hmm. the difference. We'll have more from Bob, Dr. McLevitis, our featured guest, and the whole panel in the next edition of Mac Voices. Bob digs in a little more to GarageBand, compares it to Logic and what you get between the two. The panel just can't resist the Apple Epic Games situation, uh, but this front time from a little different angle. This time we dig into Ridley Scott's comments on the 1984 commercial parody that, uh, that Epic Games did, and we wrap up with Bob giving us an update on Working Smarter for Mac users. That's all next time on Mac Voices. I hope you'll join us then. But until then, and as always, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode you will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.